The energy flips series will cover ways to increase energy efficiency and resilience in these challenging times. It is mostly focused on uh, residential and small business consumers since uh, they are at uh, the highest risk of um, incurring additional uh, costs due to problems with uh, energy availability and of course the increased cost of it and uh, due to all this um, situation that currently uncovers on the international scene i think that it is highly appropriate to find and present ways in which residential and small business consumers can apply various uh, measures from the simple ones to more complex mitigations in order to reduce their energy consumption and improve their activity in a context that is uh, quite uh, difficult. I will be covering many ways in which various goals can be achieved. Most of them are not going to be overly technical in their nature. And just as well, there needs to be some uh, details that are uh, important to share along this uh, endeavor that so many persons find it important to their activity and also many businesses. So I will be covering first the present and the prospects we have for developments as the basis for the current assumption. And then as uh, we will be moving forward, other more practical ways of um, considering the current situation and of course uh, finding ways to mitigate the impact of uh, energy price. Of course, most of them will be covering the goal of reducing energy consumption, but some will be quite interesting because they may also offer opportunities for uh, further developments. In general, the approach is going to be um, both general and specific. The details that are specific to um, certain situations are going to be presented as such. Not every measure that is going to be presented will be appropriate for all situations, but uh, they will be giving enough uh, inspiration for uh, ways to adapt. So, without further ado, I will be covering the present situation. The war in Ukraine is uh, the most important uh, disrupting factor. As you know all too well, uh, due to Russia's involvement in this conflict, uh, oil and gas exports to the world are uh, being significantly affected. I don't think it matters too much if the war is going to have um, a positive or a negative outcome for Russia, even if that is important in itself. I think that what matters much more is how much uh, these developments will affect the energy market. And I think that the change is quite important because no matter if the outcome will be positive or not for Russia, uh, the issue of uh, fossil fuel availability will still be important because uh, just about every time we hear about um, oil and gas price, we have to think about um, countries that are not um, stable in many ways. And this instability will either lead to 
fluctuations in the fuel costs or to other uh, regional problems. And all of them create, as a side effect, another impact on uh, the cost of uh, fuel. And this means that um, the impact is not going to be limited just to the current event. Um, even if the world's peace is not going to be as much affected by other developments, it's still going to be a major risk. And I think that it's important to find ways to mitigate this potential uh, risk. And it's also important to note that um, most of the world population already struggles with high energy costs. And um, this is only going to be amplified due to um, conflicts and other uh, problems that may appear around the world. And considering these uh, assumptions without even taking into account various issues pertaining to um, costs, uh, taxation, natural disasters, we still have to contend with the fact that um, fuel production and delivery is still going to be uh, quite uh, difficult. And of course, the cost that is going to be supported, that is going to be uh, the main struggle of the consumer is not going to be any less so than uh, it was in the past. So in the context of these amplifying challenges, I think that we should uh, cover quite seriously and consider ways to reduce energy consumption. But most of these should be uh, considering uh, more aspects than just the goal of reducing consumption. So why do we need to reduce energy consumption? The most obvious reason is going to be price, but I don't think that price is the biggest uh, reason, or at least it should not be the biggest reason. Because uh, first of all, um, while it's true that energy consumption is the most important cost that most of the world population has to bear, I still think that um, energy uh, consumption uh, shapes very much our uh, society and diverts so many resources in other areas that are not particularly productive. In order to maintain a um, distribution network for any sort of uh, primary energy requires extensive investments and these investments have to be carried out constantly. And since uh, availability of various um, chemical elements is not going to be ensured in the future, or at least not uh, in the same context we found it so easy in the last uh, couple of centuries. I think that we have to think about more implications than just the fact that uh, the way in which the energy market is being shaped today has a large impact. But of course, uh, first of all, we need to get over this uh, current struggle. And this is why I think that it's important to consider the impact of consumption and how to reduce it, not only in the sense of uh, mitigating a current uh, issue, but also for the way in which we ensure uh, future developments. Uh, of course, for many persons, it's a real risk of uh, default or having other financial struggles. And there is no denying that this is the basic reason for which we try to find solutions to uh, reduce uh, the impact of high energy prices on um, uh, our income, on our uh, activities. However, um, we have to think of uh, energy efficiency as being both a necessity as well as an opportunity. Because the moment we find more creative ways 
of reducing our uh, dependency on uh, energy, we are going to have additional resources that could be diverted to more um, productive means and also they could be helping us have uh, personal or uh, professional development. I think that just about any amount of uh, uh, money that is going to be lost due to the necessary payments for uh, energy is going to be a drag and we may not be uh, aware enough of how much a drag it is in the current time and uh, will also be in the future but i think that this is highly important so the first major important aspect to grasp is that energy consumption is going to have uh, a large impact on what we um, are able to do today and in the future. So I think that there is a large responsibility despite all the uh, obvious reasoning for uh, reducing such a high um, load that bears on our shoulders. It's also the issue of having uh, this uh, opportunity. And I will be presenting um, ways in which we can tackle these challenges as we move further. In this series, um, I'm going to cover both uh, solutions for uh, residential as well as small businesses. Uh, there may be many instances where uh, some solutions are going to be very easy to apply and some of them are going to be harder. However, um, the benefits that are going to um, be visible, to be felt, um, in each and every stage are going to be uh, important. And uh, I think that the most important aspect, first of all, before we try to enter any discussion about what could be done, is to understand, first of all, what we are using energy for. And I think that it's much more important than just uh, committing to a goal such as 20% reduction, 30% reduction, 50% reduction in a specific timeline to find out, first of all, what amount of energy we really require each and every month. And if we have the opportunity to find out better how we use it for what, and then we can find out ways to improve the way in which we use that energy. So the first important element is that we need to understand the current uh, consumption and the level of comfort we achieve by using uh, this energy. Of course, the discussion is quite different for a residential consumer and for a small business because um, in the case of uh, a typical uh, residential consumer, it's more about the comfort they achieve. For a small business, energy consumption may be uh, the only way in which um, a specific product could be delivered to customers. So the issue is quite different. On the, on the other hand, however, energy is still important. And the amount of energy you require for a specific activity is going to have a large impact on what you can deliver to the others and also what you have available for further improvement. And I think that, um, first of all, being able to track the, this energy consumption, whether it's electrical energy consumption, it's gas um, or any other fuel, uh, heating oil, for instance, that you may be using throughout the year, it's essential to know how much of an impact it bears on your current uh, um, financial situation. And even if that uh, consumption may not be a real challenge to you, I think that it's important to be aware of your um, consumption profile. Because uh, hopefully, while I'm not expecting the situation to 
um, get as bleak as outright um, limitations on uh, on consumption being enforced to customers i still think that reducing overall the load on the system is going to be helpful both for the current time and for the future but this requires you to have a good assessment of what you really require to uh, carry on uh, your activity and this means that you need to have uh, energy bills and you need to track um, how much you use in a specific mode if you had this um, exercise in the past i think it's um, a wonderful opportunity to get back to it because it offers a very strong foundation for any assessments regarding energy consumption and uh, capability on the other hand if you did not have such an exercise in the past now it's a wonderful opportunity to understand how you're using energy and how much uh, financial uh, impact uh, it has i'm entirely sure that uh, understanding an energy bill is not going to or an energy statement is not going to be easy for many um, customers however understanding how much of an impact uh, the actual consumption has and other additional costs will have a very good uh, will show a very good uh, perspective on what uh, could be done and this is the most important exercise you can do before thinking at anything else regarding energy consumption know how much you consume in a week in a month and uh, if you have a past data you can already think about further steps that you need to carry out however if you don't at least start with uh, uh, the current uh, week uh, write down uh, the information you have from various meters you may be using on your uh, premise and then start to think about what could be done based upon the cost of energy and of course various simulations you may have in your mind but this is the most important aspect you have to be aware how much energy you consume and how much it uh, has an impact on your uh, current uh, level of comfort or on your uh, current uh, business activity and if you are aware of uh, these initial um, details about the current situation um, further um, assessments suggestions are going to be coming on a, a very strong uh, foundation the next uh, video in the series is going to cover more uh, details about how you can organize how you can have various expectations regarding um, the prospect of uh, reducing energy consumption and uh, improving efficiency while other episodes along the way are going to cover specific measures you may carry out you have to think about uh, that the first such uh, measures are going to be entirely without any cost other than time that will be required for assessments and um, monitoring but uh, you can be sure that they will have uh, an impact and it's not going to be a uh, time that is going to be wasted hopefully we will uh, find and share more solutions that are uh, going to be as effective as possible thank you very much